here with uh, interim head coach Brandon Duvall of the volleyball team. And coach, talk about Monday's match against um, Florida A&M, nine-time defending MEAC champions. They came in here. You guys played. You you said before or after the match that you thought the team played really well. You know, obviously there was just a few parts here and there you could have done a little better. But just talk about. There must have been a lot of positives you could take out of that match. Yeah, we we talk about it all the time when we speak to the girls on their level of play and how they're competing. Uh, we tell them all the time, that's really how we're going to gauge our season. Um, obviously, we like to see the wins, more wins than the losses, but when you're playing a team like Florida A&M, who has won the conference nine years in a row, you really just want to go out and play as consistent as you can and play as hard as you can. And if you beat them, it's because you really did everything better than they did. But that, that's a really good team. I mean, they've proven it year after year. So we have to play our best volleyball at all times. Um, and I thought we played the majority of the time really good volleyball and I think we, we had a lot of unforced errors on our end that, that cost us the game and um, that's the kind of stuff that when you're a young team you kind of expect um, but something we need to start working on eliminating we've got to work through those things in practice but I think in the long run as this team continues to grow as it can continue to mature get the experience I think matches like that uh, we end up winning um, I don't, you know nothing towards Fort a and I just feel like we outwork them I think we out hustled them. I think we did everything on the court better. Um, those girls just have a lot of experience. They're very poised and uh, very consistent. And once we get to that level, um, I think that's going to be a good match for us in the future. Yeah, it was a 3 1 lo uh, loss. But there were several girls that really stood out. Noel Eagles had 28 days. We talked with her last week you know, about how important she is to that backcourt defense. Ariel had a solid match. Uh, she had 18 kills. And then Charlotte, again, had a, as usual, had a solid match. Talk about Charlotte and uh, Ariel and how they're such big hitters for you and, and the importance for them of, in your offense. And you're probably your two best hitters on the court right now. Right. We, you know, we look at our stats every single day after a match and we're realizing with our team that we've had the same contributors every single time and it's always been Charlotte. It's always been Noel. And then from there on out, it's a, you know, you don't know. It, one time it's uh, Nicole even as a setter getting more kills than any of our hitters. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and then another day it's um, Elika, and uh, one time it was China. Like it, it, it changes, but in the long run, we want to find that next consistent hitter and that's in addition to what Charlotte's doing. Um, and if we can find more than one, then we win those close matches because right now we're really relying on just a few girls to really help us win matches. And in this sport, you're not going to win a lot of matches that way. So, um, you know, when, when Ariel steps up her game and had her hitting percentage, I believe, was above a two uh, yesterday, uh, 200. You know, when you start having your second outside or right side hitting that percentage in addition to Charlotte and in addition to what Nicole was doing on the court and in addition to the solid defense we're playing, we'll start winning more ball games. And that's the exact reason why we played so well last night. But if we had that one extra player with, with uh, decent percentages or their stats showed a little bit better, uh, I think we win that ball game. And um, you know, that's fortunately we've got to keep looking for uh, within our group. Uh, we have girls that can do it. I just think, uh, you know, Mentally, sometimes they get frustrated with themselves. Sometimes they get frustrated with their teammates. And as soon as we need to pass that, then um, then we win those games. Charlotte is your one of your most consistent players, especially on offense. How do you think she's kind of grown from her freshman year into this year? How she's gotten better? Well, I've actually had the luxury of knowing Charlotte before that. She actually played for me in junior Olympics. Uh, she played on our local team, and um, so seeing where she's come from from the day she walked in the door then till now. Is tremendous. I mean, I've got to talk to her parents at extent last night. And they're very happy. They're very pleased. They see production out of her and they see how much she's grown. And she has a long way to go. Uh, I can only imagine what she's going to look like into her junior and senior year. But uh, with me and, and Coach Albaugh, who also coached that team, um, we're very pleased with her production. We're very pleased with her leadership right now. And you can just see her starting to emerge as, a, as not only the go to player, but somebody that the girls look up to um, when, they, when they need inspiration and something to help them play harder, they look at Charlotte and see that she's given everything she's got every single day, not only in practice but in the matches. That gives them way more motivation and, uh, and you can see how everybody else steps up their game because of somebody like Charlotte. She does, she does bring a lot of energy. So let's go down to court now and hear more from Charlotte what she had to say. Here now with Charlotte and Charlotte, coach has said before that you're one of the team's most consistent players. What do you think makes you a consistent player and how, how do you develop a consistent player? consistency like that? Um, all the playing that we do in practice and all the game-like situations helps build my confidence, which makes me more consistent on the court. And then for this year, how do you think you've improved from last year, um, from your freshman year now that you're a sophomore this year? How do you think you've improved? 
to that um, first year? I think that I'm more of a leader on the court and uh, my consistency, that helps with my confidence again. And my confidence level has just gone up so much more from last year. And I'm just more intense on the court and that helps the team out a lot. You're talking about consistency. Do you think, um, your consistency, do you think that just it took experience for you to get a lot of consistency? Is that something, and you know, obviously we've talked about before, there's a lot of freshmen on the team, they're still getting used to the collegiate game, but is that something just experience comes, brings consistency a lot? Experience and hard work and practice, because you practice like you play, so if we, we practice really hard during the week, so when it comes game time, we're ready. Okay. And how do you think the team, we've talked before about team goals, what, are, what goals does the team and players themselves set for themselves, and how do you reach those goals? Well, we set team goals as how we want to finish in conference and team goals like academic team goals. And then I know we set individual goals. My individual goals were like to make all conference team, to always be a leader on the court. And we measured those by, well, stats, like hitting stats. If I want to hit over a certain percentage each game, that's measured by the stats. And just the outcome of the game and how our season turns out. Is there, um, you know, besides just stats, is there kind of like goals that you can't really measure to a certain extent for individual players? You know, some, some stuff doesn't always show up in the stat sheet. But is, there just, is there anything like that for like as, as players and then as a team that you guys set, like goals like that you can't really measure? Well, I think leadership is a goal that can't really be measured through stats and intensity is a goal that can't be measured through stats. So that just shows by how the team, how the whole team ends up playing and how I guess that can only be shown through film or through the game itself. Okay. And that was sophomore Charlotte Armstead, and we'll go back up to and hear more from uh, Coach DeVall. Well, that was uh, sophomore Charlotte Armstead, and Coach Charlotte has said, you know, team goals, they have certain team goals, you know, they want to hit above a certain thing. You know, obviously wins and losses count. You can't always just set goals just based on that alone. How do you set team goals and individual goals, and how do you measure when the players reach those goals, especially when they're goals you can't necessarily measure, like a hitting percentage? Right. Well, we're you know we try to be as realistic with the team that we have as possible. We look at you know what they've done previously. Um, you know we, we gauge what they've done um, each from match to match, and then we try to set a goal for them in the next match and say, well, this is what you're averaging right now. This is what we'd like to see you averaging from here on out. Um, so that means with it, you know, for kills, does that mean you need to get a few more kills in a match? Uh, two or three more to help your percentage uh, blocks. And blocks is a tough. Uh, tough one to really average because when your best uh, players in the country are only blocking a, a two blocks a, a match mm -hmm. uh, at a time, then uh, you, it's a hard thing to gauge. But, you know, digs, serves, things like that, I mean, they're, they're, we try to set them as realistic as possible, but definitely always set them a little higher than where we're at, just so the girls are a little bit motivated. And it's nice to see at the end of every match, the girls are really interested, like, you know, what am I doing? How's my production? Um, because we talk about, you know, big picture all the time and tell them, like, you know, this, it's, it's a what have you done for me lately society and you know you don't want to go day by day doing the same thing you always want to go that next level and you can see a lot of the girls now are saying okay just, this is what I did last time what am I doing now and, and, and then you see it look in their face whether they're happy and saying wow that's so much better or they're kind of uh, like Noelle is a great example Noelle's had multiple like I think at least two times she's dug 30, 30 balls in a match uh, which is a record the first time, then she tied the second time, you know, when she found out she had 28 in this match, she was upset. She was like, oh, man, you know, and, and that's good. That's great to see because she wants to overachieve. She wants to continuously, and that's a tough stat to get better in, but, you know, that's the that kind of players we have, and it's great to see. Because I say there's some stats, like, you know, you're saying blocking. You may not have a, a lot of team blocks, you know, like, oh, we didn't have enough blocks, but maybe the blockers got a lot of their hands on the ball or their yeah. backcourt defense could easily have a dig. Is, I mean, is there stuff like that where you just, when you're looking at film, you, you're looking at stuff, you're getting better, stuff that's not showing up on the stat sheet? Yeah, we, when we look at film, we do that all the time. We look at, you know, not a, just technique in general, and we'll go back from match to match and say, okay, this is how our technique looked in the first match on blocks and why we weren't as successful defensively, and then we see how our, uh, the adjustments that we made in practice, are they paying off in the match? And then if they do pay off in the match, we try to stat how much they're paying off, what, how many points is that earning us, how many... And little things like that. The more the girls see it um, and see that success, I and mean, this uh, Monday's match was a great example. Uh, we're going to go back and watch the film on that, and the girls will see all the little minor adjustments we made in practice, how much it's paying off 
in, in, a, in a big match like Florida A&M. So it's, it's, in the long run, it's going to come us. So coming up now, you got, uh, you're got you at North Carolina a and Friday, and you're back here at Eccles Hall on Monday at 6 p.m. against uh, Savannah State. Just talk about what your, you know, this upcoming week, and I don't want to say it's a make or break week, but you can really get off on a solid footing by getting two wins against those teams. Absolutely. I mean, we're just starting our conference play, um, and what better way to start your conference play against the nine-time defending champions at Florida A&M? So it was nice to, to kind of gauge ourselves at this point of the season. We have a long tournament season in September. We're now in conference play, and uh, we got to play Florida A&M right off the bat, and now we get to play A&T and then Savannah State right after that. Um, you know, we expected. Florida A&M to be a struggle. We, we expected to have to really fight hard on that. We expect the same thing against A&T and, and Savannah State, but we're very pleased with our production on Monday. So going into this next couple of matches, I think we're going to have a lot of confidence against these, against these teams. And to be able to start off conference play two and one would be fantastic. I think these girls have earned it. I think they worked very hard, and um, and I think they're going to be pleased with uh, their outcome by Monday. Yep. So the uh, Spartans will be at North Carolina A&T on Friday. The next Monday, the October 11th, they're going to be here at 6 p.m. against Savannah State. So come on out and show your support for the Spartans. And as always, for all your information on NSU Barbell and all of NSU Athletics, visit NSUSpartans.com.